Uber Tennis looks at who is defending what points on the men's tour over the coming weeks. This week is the official start of the clay court swing of the men's tour with tournaments taking place in Marrakesh and Houston. As the focus of the players switch to the dirt, some are facing a critical two and a half months on the tour. Under the current ranking format, any points a player win at a tournament are theirs until the following year. Then they have the chance to defend those points. For example, at the upcoming Monte Carlo Masters, Rafael Nadal is the current champion and won 1,000 points in 2018. Therefore, this year, he is defending 1,000 points in the tournament. Here is a guide to how many points players are defending on the clay this season. Rafael Nadal, current ranking 2, 2018 points, defending 4,680, Monte Carlo, 1,000, champion, Barcelona, 500, champion, Madrid, 180, quarterfinals, Rome, 1,000, champion, Roland Garros, 2,000, champion, like every year, the clay court season is vital for Rafael Nadal. A player nicknamed as the king of the surface due to his record-breaking success on it, At the 2018 French Open he became the first man in history to win the same Grand Slam for an 11th time. Besides Roland Garros, he was also triumphant at two Masters tournaments and an ATP 500 event in Barcelona. Along with his dominance on the clay comes a big challenge. No other player, man or woman, will be defending as many points as Nadal this season. To put this into perspective, in the current top 10 on the ATP Tour he is defending at least 2,290 more points than anybody else. Nadal's season so far has seen him reach the final of the Australian Open, but he has also been bothered by injury issues. Withdrawing from his Indian Wells clash with Roger Federer due to a right knee injury and missing Miami afterwards. So far in his career, Nadal has won 57 of his 80 ATP titles on clay. At Rafael Nadal at rnadalacademypig.twitter.com slash white shade cvdor, Yvonne at Woody16668, April 9, 2019, Novak Djokovic current ranking 1, 2018 points, defending 855, Monte Carlo, 90, quarterfinals, Madrid, 45, round 2, Rome, 360, semifinals, Roland Garros, 360, quarterfinals. A lot has changed for Novak Djokovic since his last tournament on the clay. The Serbian world number one is currently on a 21-match winning stake in the Grand Slam tournaments. Should he prevail at Roland Garros later this season, he would hold all four major titles at the same time for a second time in his career. There is a lot of optimism for Djokovic, who is undoubtedly in better shape both mentally and physically than that of 12 months ago. Although, he had recently endured a disappointing run in America with earlier-than-expected losses in Indian Wells and Miami. With just 855 points to defend, Djokovic is in a prime position to strengthen his lead at the top of the rankings. Should he perform better at certain events, especially the Madrid Open where he lost in the second round last year? Djokovic has contested 23 ATP finals on the clay so far in his career, winning 13 titles. However, his most recent triumph was back in 2016 at the French Open. Nothing can stop Novak Djokovic in his training for the clay season. Umbrella with raindrops, video at Joe Connell, pic.twitter.com slash ql 4 yabunal we are tennis at where tennis, April 9, 2019, Roger Federer, current ranking 4, 2018 points, defending 0, didn't play any clay tournaments in 2018, Swiss maestro Roger Federer finds himself in a win-win situation. The 20-time Grand Slam champion is set to make his return to the clay at the Madrid Open next month. in what will be his first competitive match on the surface since the 2016 Italian Masters. In recent years, Federer has missed the clay swing due to either injury or opting to rest his body. 
due to his hiatus from the clay, any wins Federer records will add to his current points tally. Few regards him as a serious contender for major glory given the likes of Nadal and Djokovic, but should Federer achieve some deep runs in tournaments, he could rise further up the rankings. Placing him in a stronger spot heading into his beloved grass season. I'm not very confident going into this clay court season, I can tell you that, because I don't even remember how to slide anymore. I'm taking baby steps at this point, Federer told reporters in March. To be honest, I didn't play one point, not one shot on clay, I don't believe, last year. Two years ago I played two days. Three years ago I played not feeling great in Monaco and Rome and all that. So it's been so little that I really don't know what to expect. It was at the French Open where Federer played his first main draw match in a Grand Slam. Losing in the first round of the 1999 tournament to third seed Pat Rafter. In bed from Getty Images Alexander Zverev, current ranking 3, 2018 points defending 2,570, Monte Carlo, 360, semi-finals, Munich, 250, champion, Madrid, 1,000, champion, Rome, 600, runner-up, Roland Garros, 360, quarter-finalist, 21-year-old Zverev is the only top 10 player in action this week after accepting a wild card to play in the Marrakesh Open. A tournament where the winner can claim 250 points. The German is hoping to turn his fortunes around over the next few weeks following a roller coaster start to 2019. Blighted by illness recently, Zverev was far from his best on the America hard courts. However, he has illustrated his talent during the first two events of the year. Reaching the fourth round of the Australian Open, losing to Milos Raonic, and the final of the Mexican Open, losing to Nick Kyrgios. Zverev has the second highest amount of points to defend after Nadal. Last year he enjoyed his best ever run on the clay, which was highlighted by a Masters title, Madrid, and reaching the quarterfinals at Roland Garros. Zverev's best Grand Slam performance to date. Zverev will kick off his Marrakesh campaign on Tuesday against Denis Istomin. Dominic Team current ranking 5, 2018 points defending 2,240, Monte Carlo, 180, quarterfinals, Madrid, 600, runner-up, Rome, 10, round 2, Lyon, 250, champion, Roland Garros, 1,200, runner-up. It can be argued that Austria's Dominic team is at his most dangerous when playing on the clay. Illustrated by the fact he is one of only three of players to have ever defeated Nadal on the surface three times. The other two are Djokovic and Gasto Guido. Team embarks upon the clay swing high in confidence after clinching his first Masters 1000 title in Indian Wells. He will return to action next week in Monte Carlo as the fourth seed in the draw. One thing that would never change is that clay is my home, team recently stated. It's my favorite surface. I grew up on it. I just feel great whenever I come back at it. So far in team's career, 14 out of his 19 ATP finals have been played on the clay. Kenishi Kori, current ranking 6, 2018 points defending 970, Monte Carlo, 600, finalist Madrid, 10, round 1, Rome, 180, quarterfinals, Roland Garros, 180, round 4. In 2014 Kenishi Kori became the first Japanese-born player to win a clay court title on the ATP Tour at the Barcelona Open. Meanwhile, at the French Open he has reached the fourth round or better every year since 2015. The biggest challenge for Nishikori starts on Monday in Monte Carlo, where he will be defending 600 out of his 970 points on the clay. Last year at the tournament he scored wins over Marin Cilic and Zverev before losing to Nadal. I'm not playing bad or terrible. I try to keep my head up. Clay court season is coming. It's completely new season. 
I'd try to have a good practice, two more weeks, and be ready for Monte Carlo, Nishikori said following his loss at the Miami Open. Good practice with a Jordan thumb mo two thumbs up thumbs up thumbs up flexed biceps flexed biceps flexed biceps at academy pig dot twitter dot com slash one nf gag k nishikori at k nishikori april third twenty nineteen the other guys here is the amount of points some other members of the ATP tour are defending this year number seven Kevin Anderson five hundred and fifty points SF Madrid R1 Roman QF French Open No. 8 Stefanos City Pass 575 points R2 Monte Carlo Runner-up Barcelona SF Estrel R2 Roman R2 French Open Asterisk No. 9 Juan Martin Del Potro 900 points QF Madrid QF Roman SF French Open Asterisk No. 10 John Isner SF Houston SF Madrid R2 Rome SF Leon and QF French Open number 13 Borna Coric 235 points R2 Monte Carlo QF Madrid R1 Rome and QF French Open number 16 Marco Chacanato 1091 points R2 Monte Carlo Champion Budapest R2 Rome and SF French Open Asterisk currently sidelined by injury note, rankings based on week commencing the 8th of April 19, an update concerning the current health of the Argentine has been issued. Juan Martín del Potro, photo by Chrysline K. Lord, copyright at Sport Vision, former U.S. Open champion Juan Martín del Potro will undergo a new regenerative treatment as he continues his rehabilitation following a knee injury. The Argentine has been only able to play in one tournament so far this year, which was at Delray Beach. At the tournament Del Potro reached the quarterfinal before losing to Mackenzie McDonald. The 30-year-old has been sidelined from the tour after damaging his right patella bone kneecap at the Shanghai Masters last October. Giving an update on Del Potro's health, Dr. Angel Kotaro believes he is heading in the right direction to stage a comeback to the tour. Kotaro is a well-known medical professional back in his home country of Spain. Previously working with Rafael Nadal and the Spanish Olympic teams. Besides starting a new regenerative treatment, Del Potro will also follow a specialized rehabilitation program ahead of his return to the tour. Juan Martín del Potro visited the Mapfi clinic last week because of the fracture in his right kneecap he suffered almost six months ago. Since the beginning he was advised to take a conservative approach with his treatment. After participating in Del Rey Beach he began a regenerative treatment with Dr. Alejandro Rolan in Buenos Aires. He later had multiple medical tests done in Barcelona and considering his progress in the past few weeks, it's been decided to implement a new regenerative treatment. Also, he will follow a specific rehabilitation program led by his physiotherapist, Diego Rodriguez, which will progressively allow the player to incorporate further training and compete on tour again in the near future, Kotaro said in a statement. The statement follows previous speculation that Del Potro might be forced to undergo surgery. His manager, Jorge Viale, told El Eco de Tandel last month that an operation is always a possibility. It is still unclear as to when the former world number three will return to the tour and if he will be fit in time to play at the French Open. A tournament he has only been able to play in twice since 2013. On April 4, Del Potro tweeted that doctors was satisfied with his progress and that he will be returning back to the practice squad soon. This week I had multiple tests done on my knee in Barcelona by doctor. Ankle Kotaro and after reviewing my results he advised me to continue with my current treatment. He is satisfied with my progress and soon I will be back on court training. Thank you all for your kind messages, hugging face O-R-N-M. Del Potro, at Del Potro June April 4, 2019 Del Potro is currently ranked 9th in the world rankings. During the upcoming clay swing of the tour, he has a total of 900 points to defend.
most of which will be at Roland Garros where he reached the semi-finals last year. So far in his career, Del Potro has won 22 ATP titles, including the 2009 US Open and has been ranked as high as third in the world. Could a one-week agreement between the two lead to something more permanent? Caroline Wozniacki at the 2019 Australian Open photo Roberto Del Olivo last week's Volvo Car Open saw Caroline Wozniacki add a new dynamic to her coaching team in the shape of a former French Open champion. Watching from the sidelines was Francesca Schiavone, a former rival and top 10 player who won eight WTA titles. Schiavone pulled the curtain on her career in 2018 after playing in the main draw of 70 Grand Slam events. The two bumped into each other during the Miami Open last month where it was agreed that the Italian would help Wozniacki during her first clay court event of the season in Charleston. So Francesca lives in Miami part-time, and I actually saw her right by where I live and said, Hey, why don't you come to my practice? You know, give me a few tips on the clay, and she was like, sure why love to. WTA Tennis.com quoted Wozniacki as saying. And then we just had one practice, and I said, so what are your plans next week? She was like, I'm free if you need me, so I said, why don't you come to Charleston with me? I think it's great, she knows the clay so well, obviously it's her favorite surface. For me, it's just good to get a few pointers and a few tactical things, stuff like that. So here we are. The tips seem to have paid off for the Dane, who went on to reach the final of the tournament. Her best performance achieved on the surface since the 2017 Swedish Open. During the tournament she scored wins over three seeded players, including Petra Martic and Maria Sakkari. However, she was denied the title on Sunday by Madison Keys. I think sometimes it's just, she's like, okay, well try this maybe, or that can make a difference when you get a deep ball or a short ball, or this is how you can cover the net maybe slightly better, the former world number one said of Schiavone. There's a few things that I always want to do better, so those are just the kind of things, like the little things that can make a difference. Schiavone has made it no secret about her desire to turn to coaching after her retirement from the sport. Speaking to reporters at the US Open last September, the 38-year-old said she hopes to one day guide a player to Grand Slam success. After 20 years of my career and life, I have new dreams. I have new dreams every day of my life. My new dream is to come here to Flushing Meadows and win a Grand Slam as a coach. Schiavone stated, it would be a fantastic emotion for me. For sure, to help some players to reach their goals. It is unclear if she would be able to achieve that goal with Wozniacki, who is guided on the tour by her father. Piotr Wozniacki has been her main coach since she was a teenager. However, she has also previously worked alongside Thomas Johansson, Sven Grainveld and Thomas Hogsted. Piotr will undoubtedly remain the top dog in the team, but will there be a space for Schiavone during the European swing on clay? I think we'll sit down after this tournament next week and just see how we feel. Wozniak explained following her third round match in Charleston. Wozniacki's next tournament is set to be the Madrid Open next month. Not the trophy I had hoped for, but so many good things I can take with me from this week. Most importantly feeling good and improving every day. Thank you Charleston for a great week. Pick.twitter.com slash rttsedville Caroline Wozniacki at Cara Wozniacki April 7, 2019 The 24-year-old has scored her first WTA silverware of any kind since 2017. Madison Keys at Volvoker Open on Twitter Madison Keys has become the ninth American player in history to win the Volvo Car Open in Charleston after overcoming Caroline Wozniacki 7-6, 5-6-3 in a heavy-hitting encounter.
the 24-year-old, who was runner-up in the tournament back in 2015, managed to go one step further this year with the help of her powerful shot-making. Illustrated by Key's six aces and 45 winners produced throughout the match. A stark contrast to Wozniacki's tally of 2 and 7. Heading into the showdown in Charleston, Wozniacki boasted a 2-0 head-to-head record against her American rival, winning both of those matches in straight sets. However, this time round Keyes found a formula to keep pressure on Wozniacki throughout the dramatic opening set. The all-or-nothing play from Keyes saw her hit a series of breathtaking shots alongside some erratic errors. 25 winners to 24 unforced errors to be precise. Trading breaks during the early stages of the match, it was a tiebreaker that separated the two. Key's fierce forehand put off her opponent, who hit a double fault to hand her a mini break for 5 to 3. A point later, Key's secured a triple set point opportunity after a costly mistake from Wozniacki saw her leave the ball, which landed in, prompting gasps of surprise from the crowd. Still, closing the set out wasn't easy for the world number 18, who saw two chances come and go. Nevertheless, Keyes prevailed on her third opportunity with the help of a winning backhand shot to clinch the opener after 75 minutes of tense play. Continuing to stand firm behind her serve, Keyes battled towards the finish title. During the second set it was a stroke of luck that helped her secure a breakthrough. A Wozniacki backhand into the net rewarded Keyes a breakpoint opportunity to extend her lead to a set and 4-2. An opportunity she seized with the help of a shot that tapped the top of the net before landing onto her opponent's side of the court. Leaving the former Australian Open champion bemused about the situation. Tasked with serving for her maiden clay court title, Keys roared to two championship points against her frustrated rival. Victory was then secured with the help of a straightforward volley. Resulting in a fist clench and a roar of joy from the new Charleston champion. What a week for at Madison. Keys. Defeats Tajana Maria, Yelena Ostapenko, Sloane Stevens, first win, Monica Puig, and now Caroline Wozniacki, first win, to capture her first clay title, first title since 2017, and fourth overall. The Dane hasn't won a title on the surface since the Brussels Open back in 2011. In total Wozniacki has won four titles on the clay, which is the eighth highest amount among active players on the WTA Tour. Congratulations on an incredible week and well played today. You were just too good for me, she said in tribute to Keys. I want to thank my family in my box. You guys have always been there for me when I win or when I lose. Also, thank you Francesca Schiavone. I feel like although my love for Clay hasn't always been there, this week has been very enjoyable. Key's triumph marks the first week of her reunion with coach Juan Todero, who worked with her during 2013 and 2014. Todero has previously mentored WTA players such as Monica Puig, Lauren Davis and Alison Risk. It was a really good first week for my coach and I. Hopefully we can keep this up at a kind of high bar, Keys evaluated. As a result of her title, Keys will rise to 14th in the WTA rankings when they are updated on Monday. Meanwhile, Wozniacki will be in 12th position.